and off we go. Welcome one and all to the Year of Retro Gaming Project. I hope you brought your nostalgia with you. First off, I'll let you know how this video series is going to work. Each week I'm going to play one or more games from my retro collection. If I can make it all the way to the end of a game, awesome. If a game is too difficult or frustrating, I'll call it quits. I will do my best though to play through as much as possible, but you know, I'm a time poor adult like lots of people. My main observation will be to see if the game still stands the test of time all these years later. Some games won't quite stand, perhaps they'd still be okay with nostalgia goggles on. Those ones will sit. And then there'll be those games, those terrible games that haven't aged well at all and really don't hold much value in the 21st century. Those games fall. Got that? Ready? Good to go? Let's begin. I'm going to start off with one of the first Nintendo games I ever played, Ice Climber. I can remember enjoying this a lot in the early days, especially with two players, but last I remembered it hadn't aged well. Let's take a look. The title screen has this jazzy, bluesy music which is cool. Being an early Nintendo game, there's only two tunes in this entire game, so yeah. In Ice Climber, you play as these cute little mountaineers, Popo and Nana, and the aim of the game is to reach the top of the mountain. These characters were given a new lease of life when they became playable in Smash Brothers Melee and Brawl. They were quite an obscure inclusion since this is the only game they've ever actually featured in. There's 32 levels of increasing difficulty, but in true arcade fashion there's not much variation. When you reach the top of the mountain you enter a kind of bonus level and if you grab onto the claws of the pterodactyl you get the big bonus. Yeah, I don't get the purpose of the pterodactyl either, but hey, points for weirdness. And that's it. There's really not much to the game, but it, it was early days, so I think that's forgivable. I wouldn't want to pay top price for a game this simple, though. The first thing you notice when you start to play is that the jumping is really bad. Popo and Nana sometimes clip right through platforms that I swear I landed on, and it's often really hard to make them do what you want them to. But, somewhat guiltily, I still kind of enjoy playing Ice Climber. Don't get me wrong, it's not a great game. It hasn't aged that well and the novelty wears thin pretty quickly. But especially with another player, it can be a bit of harmless fun. I'll say it sits. For the next game, I'm going to be using the Virtual Console on the Wii. How awesome is it to be able to play these classic games legally? So cool. You know, I'd never even heard of Dig Dug before, but it was apparently a popular arcade game by Namco before it was ported to the Famicom, and I did have a game called Digger on my first PC, and I used to love that. As it turns out, Dig Dug is fairly similar to Digger. The aim is to dig through the ground and use your pump to blow up the monsters like balloons until they burst. <laughs> How fantastically violent. Lucky everything is so gosh darn adorable. It's really cute how the music only plays when the character's moving. Is this perhaps the first interactive music in a video game? Yeah, quite possibly. So, like all the games of this era, each level is really just a rehash of the last one, only a little bit tougher, much like Ice Climber. This game wouldn't be so hard if the enemies didn't cheat. Look at that. They can travel through walls, that's unfair. I'm gonna say the Dig Dug sits as well. Is it a great game? No. Would it hold people's attention for more than a few minutes at a time? Probably not. But hey, it's a bit of mindless fun. For the other games of this week, I used a different method again. This time I played the games through Animal Crossing on the GameCube, remember that? I can't believe Splinky's neighbours still want to know him after all the years of neglect. One of the cool things about Animal Crossing was though, you could get NES games as a present on your birthday, which was brilliant. So here we have Balloon Fight. This one is probably my favourite out of the games this week. It's actually kind of two different games in one. The first one you see here is where you just have to pop the balloons of the birds. I think they're birds. And try not to have your own balloons popped. I guess it's kind of like a precursor to the battle mode in Mario Kart. Operating the little balloon dude isn't that easy though. You've got to try and get the high ground. Well, worked for Obi-Wan. The other mode, Balloon Trip, has you dodging these electric stars by tapping the A button to carefully, carefully navigate your way through the gauntlet of death. Oh, dang it. There was another game I played recently that had me tapping the A button to move very similar to this. Wait a minute. The spirit of Balloon Fight lives on. 
Balloon Fight is fun and challenging. I feel like it's got more content than the last couple of games, and it's always fun to try and beat your best score in Balloon Trip mode. I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that Balloon Fight is the first game of this year that stands the test of time. Feel free to disagree with me if you want, but I like it. Next up is Golf. Another one of the first Nintendo games I ever played. I can remember how gobsmacked I was at how much detail this game had. I mean, you had all these clubs to choose from, you had to account for the wind, and there were 18 different holes to play on. What I remember liking best, though, was that the way Mario... Is, is that Mario? Probably. Mario would actually be facing what was ahead of you on the course. How cool is that? What clever programmers those early Nintendo guys were. Ugh. No old school player could forget this noise. Yep, the golf ball that sounds like a cow. This week, I still found myself playing through all 18 holes just to see what score I'd get. There's joy to be found in simplicity, and I think that pretty much sums up all the early Nintendo games. I must admit, though, that if you didn't grow up in the 80s, a game like this would probably be laughably basic and not worth your time. I'll say it sits. While I was in Animal Crossing, I briefly played these other games that I had there as well, ones that I hadn't actually put onto my ever-growing list for this year, but I'll give them a quick look. Clue Clue Land is actually a pretty clever puzzle game. You need to make a little character move around the play area and unearth these crystals. The controls are weird, there's no getting around it. It took me quite a while to get used to it and there were many moments of frustration, but yeah, there's actually a worthwhile little puzzler here. I'd say this one stands if you've got the patience to get to know it. Excite Bike. I failed to see what's exciting. I don't get this game. It seems to be revered as some kind of Nintendo classic in some circles, but I don't find it very fun at all. To its credit, it does have a track editor, which is pretty forward-thinking for the time it was released. It's a bit cumbersome, but hey, good on them for thinking outside the box. But overall, I, I don't think this is one that needs to be revisited. It falls. And there's Donkey Kong. Ah, the memories. Who the heck doesn't know this game? To be perfectly honest, it's not the most playable of the early Nintendo stuff, but you can't not play Donkey Kong. It's like the grandfather of modern gaming. If by some strange chance you haven't played the game before, the giant gorilla Donkey Kong, not King Kong because that would mean a copyright infringement, He's kidnapped Mario's girlfriend, Pauline. So Mario, or Jumpman, being the good hero that he is, goes to rescue her while DK tries to stop him. Look, it's okay. It's definitely worth playing for its historical value. But I can't see this game holding people's attention for too long, and the enemy patterns can be very random and frustrating at times. Does anyone else remember having to do perfect runs of this to finish Donkey Kong 64? Ugh. Anyway, I'll see Mario next week in a much better game. Watch this space. Phew! So, there's the first week of gaming down. I did get an early jump on 2011 since I'm all too aware of how many games I've got to get through in the coming year. Daunting and also exciting. I hope you'll come on this journey with me. Let's see what's coming up next week. I'll be hitting the courts for some tennis, heading into the arcade for some pinball, journeying to ancient Greece for some mythology, and, of course, saving the Mushroom Kingdom from an evil dragon turtle king. Hope to see you soon. Peace out.